my name is Chris Blakely. Uh, I am a lecturer at the University of Ulster within the Ulster Sports Academy. And today I was talking about the use of cryotherapy uh, and in particular uh, the evidence base for its use. Cryotherapy, cryo means cold, um, so it's essentially the use of cold for therapeutic purposes. Cryotherapy is proposed to have a range of different effects on the body, um, including decreasing pain, influencing inflammation, decreasing swelling, uh, and also decreasing metabolism. So all those effects could potentially be of use in an acute soft tissue injury. After an acute injury, um, the injury site itself, uh, there's quite a lot going on, but there's not a lot of um, blood getting to the area, uh, which can cause a phenomenon known as secondary cell injury. So basically, the healthy cells around the injury site get starved of um, blood and oxygen and nutrients uh, and can die. So if you cool body tissue, you reduce the metabolism. So it provides a mechanism for those cells to cope with that ischemic environment. That's the theoretical basis for it. It doesn't always translate that neatly into a real life setting. Uh, and uh, if you want to maximally or effectively decrease metabolism, um, it's sometimes limited to injuries that are quite close to the, the surface of the skin. Uh, and uh, we know that body fat um, can affect the effectiveness of, of cooling as well. Um, so we need to have a superficial injury in an athlete that doesn't have a lot of overlying um, fat or adipose tissue. It, it's very possible to achieve therapeutic uh, intramuscular temperatures in um, an elite athlete. So for example, uh, a, a runner, an elite rugby player, an elite soccer player who doesn't have a large amount of body fat, um, it, ice can be more effective. Um, but in terms of body parts, uh, obviously there are some areas of the body that are covered with more adipose than, than others. Um, an, an ankle sprain, there's not a lot of overlying adipose, so potentially you can have a much better effect than say if you had a, a deep um, quad or a deep um, gluteal contusion injury. I, I think there's a placebo effect inherent in a lot of therapies. Um, ice is no different, um, and I guess that uh, particularly because it does have uh, such an extreme cooling sensation. In saying that, that in itself can be a valuable uh, th therapeutic outcome. It, it's a very good at decreasing pain and improving patient comfort. Um, but it is an important take home message that just because something feels cool on your skin, it doesn't necessarily mean that all the other potential therapeutic effects of, of cooling are happening. Often the practices in sport, particularly elite sport, often aren't driven by um, evidence based. They can be uh, driven more by, by popularity. Um, so cold water immersion was a, w was a good example of that. Um, and uh, the popularity certainly doesn't correlate that well with the number of um, large scale studies uh, that have been published um, looking at its effectiveness. I think we need to be mindful uh, of that and um, I guess if you are engaging in um, new age or innovative treatments uh, without any evidence base, uh, athletes and practitioners need to be sure that um, it's not going to cause any harm. It doesn't necessarily do everything that, that, that people expect, um, but it is a very good, quick, cheap, um, easy way to um, reduce pain in an area. It can be used very effectively as part of rehabilitation. Uh, in certain injuries, it can be uh, of benefit in terms of minimizing metabolism. And I think really an untapped area uh, that requires a significant amount of research, particularly in muscle injuries, is maybe the use of ice at um, impacting on uh, reperfusion injury.